Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing a book review kind of on the book A Little History of the World by E.H. Gombreich. I'm not exactly sure how to say it because it's German so I know I'm going to pronounce it incorrectly and I don't have a dust cover on it so there's nothing interesting for you guys to look at so there's the spine if you guys can see it. I say kind of book review because I'm going to be talking about the book but I mean this isn't really a book to review. Basically this is like a children's history book. The author was working on his doctorate I believe. His kids were like oh you know what are you spending your so much time working on and so he basically explained the topic of it in really basic terms. He took really like complex ideas of history and simplified it down quite a bit so that way his kids could understand and then this kind of spurred the idea of creating a children's history book. Each chapter goes through um, a certain era or certain topics and it starts at like basically the beginning of man and goes up into World War II and it covers a wide variety of topics so there's nothing that's left behind you know major points in history and different religions and things like that. Each chapter is maybe only 10 pages long if even that so this isn't like an extensive history on anything whatsoever so I mean as an adult it kind of already feels like things you already know because if you've had to take history classes at all you probably know about everything that's in this book but at the same time it was kind of fun to read because the way he wrote it is really fun and exciting and you know he makes jokes in there he addresses the readers of the book so it's kind of as if a teacher was talking to a student or you know a parent is talking to their kid and they're telling them the story about these events that happened. And it's really funny because when I'm reading this and because it has a sort of narration to it I felt like I was reading the book version of Crash Course because the way the book is written is so informal and so fun. It kind of reminds me of the way that John Green does his world history crash course episodes because he's so informal and fun and he talks about complex ideas but he talks about them in a slightly simpler way so that way it's more understandable and relatable. This book was written in the 1930s. Like I said earlier the author is German so you can obviously tell that is kind of a significant portion of time. This book was originally written in German and then it was eventually translated into English and when it was translated into English there was a final chapter that was added on that basically talks about World War II and what he experienced. Him and his family had to escape Hitler. Um, I think they ended up moving to England. It's such an interesting take because when he was writing this book he had no idea what he was right on the cusp of and it's only looking back that you realize kind of the significance of it and the time period that he's writing in. Like it's really funny reading all of these things and especially when you get to World War One and everything that's more modern in this book. He writes it as if World War One is like the biggest event that's going to happen in history because it really was at that point but he had no idea that something bigger was right along the way like within a year or so. And another thing he talks about in the chapter about World War Two is about how he realized looking back how some of the things and some of his perceptions were off. It wasn't completely his fault, it's the way things are being reported and given to him and the way the world kind of looked at things was different. You know, they saw certain policies or certain leaders doing things and they saw it as being bad when really it turned out to be good and things like that. And I really wanted to do a review and a video on this book because I think the idea of writing about history, especially like while it's happening, is such a uh, interesting and complex thing. That's something that journalists kind of have to do and when people write you know books about recent events they're kind of doing it as well. It's really difficult to be able to know the direction that say a bill or a certain action will have in the long run. It's only looking back you know the idea of hindsight being 2020 that you can sort of piece together a relatively linear cause effect timeline but when you are living it you have no idea what your causes will affect. We have no idea how people in the future will look back on us and you know how they will judge us or how they will assume certain things about us or you know how the things that we're doing now will affect them. I feel like that should always kind of be something that's in our mind. I felt like this was a really interesting book to read and I would recommend it in the sense that it's really interesting to see how the perspectives were on history. Even just picking up this book and reading you know like the last few chapters is really worth it. I just wanted to say that in my last video there's been a great discussion going on about books and genres and reading outside of your comfort zone and things like that so I just want to say thanks so much to everyone 
who's been commenting on that video. I really love all the comments and I'm trying to reply to everyone. If you haven't already watched that video, be sure to check that one out and you'll leave a comment with your thoughts or, you know, reply to other people's comments and get a conversation going because it's been really fun seeing what's happening there so far. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. sort of make these grand assumptions about either people or decisions that are being made in government, you know, things. Wow, that's such a bad phrasing. <clears throat> I always think it's so interesting. <clears throat> I always so... Uh,